Our dearest viewers from across the world, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh and welcome to Imam Hussain TV3 where once again we're live from our London studio but most importantly and most surprisingly I should say it's still sunny outside although kind of we've gone to sunset but alhamdulillah we're, we're, we're taking the sun for what we can here. Our dearest viewers, our continuation of our celebration and our glorification of the Perfect 14 alayhim salam continues as we celebrate the birth anniversaries of three epic individuals Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam, his dear father Imam Hussain alayhi salam and of course his noble brother the one we look up to for fortitude, service and loyalty Abu Fadl Abbas may Allah bless them all abundantly and their families Again, I'm joined by three amazing guests. I don't do fancy introductions beyond. So, Haydar, Ibrahim, and Mohsin, Jazakumullah Khair Jazak. Thank you for joining us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And as mentioned, we're going to continue from where we left off yesterday, which was the topic of no topic except praise, fawa'il, and just the truth about these epic individuals. Dear viewers, we're going to have some poetry throughout some carefully pinned together words recited and delivered to you and also some ahadith and narrations from the lives of these personalities so we can learn and be inspired by them because I don't know about you guys, I truly truly believe that nowadays our role models need to really change from the typical, ah, oh, this epic football player, yes, mashallah <laughs> let him be your role model on the football pitch as we were saying before but in life you need something a bit more than just a football player. You need an Abu Fadl in your life. You need an Imam Hussein in your life. You need an Imam Sajjad to be like, you know what? Prostration, I learned it from this man, you know? So, Mullah Ibrahim, I start with you. Where do you want to go? Who is, who is your man for this evening that we begin with, inshallah? Uh, honestly, with all these three amazing names you've mentioned, um, I would link it back to the Quranic ayah of لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا mm. You had a great example in Rasulullah and I would like to comment on, on the note you just noted of hey. uh, a football player Yes, of course, a football player might be playing amazingly mm. Let's use that skill on the pitch However, when we're dealing with people through our akhlaq when we're dealing through anything that we do I think looking at Ahl Bayt is the best thing to do mm. um, A cousin of mine uh, Dr. Basim Ansari, for those of you who know him, in fact in Arba'in, he wrote a piece of poetry. And I think, uh, although it's not Arba'in, it's the Walada, but I just take some parts of it and I think it will be beautiful to be um, mentioned today. Please. And it's about the call of Imam Hussein. So he said, Hussein issued a call to be humane. It is calling us to be virtuous and sane to be for good and from bad to refrain mm. calling for a way to end all brutal pain calling for a way to end all brutal pain Hussein and peace are indeed a twain He attracts millions to Karbala His fame to learn From his ways and strength to attain mm. To be determined and truthful like Hussein mm. To be determined and truthful like Hussein. Of course, Abu Abdullah, an inspiration to all our lives. But Sayyid Haida, maybe a little bit about the Iraqi community, obviously massively intertwined with Abu Abdullah. You know, the center is named after him and it's, it's intertwined. And maybe perhaps a memory from your past and from your childhood about how this man was glorified as a role model for you? Yani, there are there is, there is things that um, a mind cannot think of mm. the glorification of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. And um, words cannot match his status. Mm. And I believe poetry is just something um, that, just, that just gives you a flutter in your mind 
of who Imam Hussein actually is. Mm. Now, Iraq would not be Iraq if it wasn't for the sacrifice of Abu Abdullah al-Hussein. And um, us growing up, we always, uh, you know, with our fathers, we always attend majalis. Now, and this is the blessing from Imam Hussein that's been given to us because us four over here wouldn't be together today if it wasn't for Imam Hussein. Mm. Definitely. We, you know, Husseiniyat, these majalis that has, that has been created for the sake of Imam Hussein is what brought us all together. And this is the, the memories I need, me growing up is just attending Husseini with my father, you know, and uh, when as soon as you come in since a young age, all you hear is Imam Hussein, Imam Hussein, Imam Hussein, you know, they cry for him, they they they, they, they lament, they, they cook, they serve. Mm. You see them from the eldest to the youngest, they all occupied doing something for the sake of Allah Abdullah. Yeah. So this this man who actually who who was able to um, through the divine of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to 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 give this love and place it in each and every single person's heart. Now, even a person who doesn't know Imam Hussein, when he's telling him his story, he'll shed a tear. Mm. Yeah. And a person, uh, th there are there are massive um, um, characters in our history who's actually mentioned Imam Hussein, which are not in uh, Islam themselves. Um, so, as I said, you know, poetry is just something to kind of like tingle the mind of uh, of, of of the beauty of Imam Hussein. So, this is a poem. Um, from uh, a dear brother of Tahir, mm. Adil. Um, it's very nice. It's, it's the same kind of ideas. It's, it's, it's all for Ba'in and stuff like that. But I feel like poetry, um, you know, whether whether it's whether it's for a sad occasion or a happy occasion, it all brings out the same message. Of course. And it should, inshallah, give you the same effect. Inshallah. Uh, in your heart. Inshallah. Bismillah. <clears throat> I cannot grasp the wind with my hands Nor hold my shadow with my finger I cannot stare into the sun without a blink So how can I explain your love? through ink I can see your light like the start of dawn and feel your heart within me your Hussein is drawn and I feel your heat within me drawn with the paint of your sacrifice taken from your throat painted within me and with your love this I wrote I've lived to learn that love can die but death itself from you was shy but death itself from you was shy. The death from you was shy. Mm. That's 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 a statement. Huh? It's, 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 you know these these kind of uh, things that ha I think have a massive effect, effect into a listener. There's a there's, there's a line. Abdul Khalik Muhammad, I think correct me if I'm if I'm mistaken. He says the um, Al Qasim. He says the the, the wind. Is embarrassed to come and, you know, um, in Arabic, it's like uh, you see when the, when the wind hits you and your hair kind of like, mm. you know, the wind was embarrassed to come towards Al Qasim just in case it moves. Is you know, so there's there's these kind of like um, things which actually are true, you know. I mean, for Mary, if for Mary dates fell from a tree, mm. then imagine the blessings of of the Ahlul Bayt mm. what they can bring around. I want to share a very brief hadith actually about <coughs> Imam Hussein alayhi salam, which again I think we, we mentioned this yesterday when we, when we talk about these three personalities especially naturally a lot of the lessons are derived from Karbala and the time either before, during or just after Karbala and this hadith relates to a moment where we find out about something whilst in Karbala but about Imam Hussein's life and it's similar to what we mentioned about Imam Sajjad yesterday so it says a mark was seen on Hussein's back on the day of Ashura. So on the day of Ashura, a mark was seen on his back. So they asked Imam Sajjad about it and he replied, This is the mark left by the sacks of food he carried on his back 
to the houses of widows, orphans, and the destitute. And you know, there's two things I take from this. Number one is this notion of, I think, I think Imam Sajjad, but you know, I, 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 please don't quote me this, I think Imam Sajjad says you should give with what your right hand such that the other doesn't even know about it. And yesterday we mentioned a hadith about Imam Sajjad where it said exactly something along these lines where it was him who was giving food in the night in a time in Medina where, you know, politically against the Shias, it was very, very challenging, yet giving food, giving food, giving food. We then see Imam Hussein alayhi salam giving food, giving food, giving food. Abel Aytam, his father, giving food, giving food, giving food. Imam al-Hassan, no different. The story of the household, the beggars knocking, etc. Giving food, give, constantly giving. It's, it's recurring throughout Ahl al-Bayt al So that's the first thing I take from that. The second thing I take from that is, it's only on the day of Ashura, when Imam Hussein has almost no control about his coverings, and you know, he can't hide all of his good deeds anymore because you know, he doesn't want to boast to the people. Only then, someone asks, ah, oh, what is this? And another good deed is revealed about this man. And I think it's a beautiful little thing for us to take away, even if something so simplistic that doing these good <laughs> deeds, keep them quiet, keep them secret, you know, keep that nobility. And inshallah, one day Allah will show the world, you know, look, look at this man and look at this individual and what he stood for. And let that be the message that carries through, inshallah. Say, Mohsin, you've been quietly sitting and soaking I up your no thoughts. Brain, sorry, I have oh, no brain, sorry. But you have, you have knowledge to impart. In, I, I have a, a very few. Please, please, some, please. Some seeds. Um, inshallah, we'll be talking about Imam Hussein. And I'll give you some of what I've heard <coughs> in, in the Hawza and also on mm -hmm. the member. One thing that we forget uh, about the Ahl al-Bayt was the, the akhlaq. Mm. It's very important to keep uh, you know, learning and taking lessons <laughs> from the Ahl al-Bayt in regards to akhlaq and your manners, man mannerisms towards one another. And once Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, they saw uh, an elderly gentleman doing his wudu and he was doing it wrong. Now, how do you approach an old man and tell him that this is, you've done it wrong? Mm -hmm. How long has he been doing wudu in the incorrect manner? And how do you save someone from embarrassment? Mm. How do you save him from the shame? Or, or how, how, how do you, you know, It's very difficult for, for a young person. Unfortunately, some youngsters, you know, if they're not taught correctly how to speak to someone, <laughs> they'll, be like, oh, they'll react in the way, unfortunately, how their parents would react. Yeah, yeah. Very harsh, very stern. Maybe a tone of, you should know better. However, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, what did they do? They went to the old man and said, Oh, Amu, can you help us here? Who performs wudu better between us two? Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. Who, who performs it better? Who performs it more correct? Who is more sahih? Hmm. So they both performed the wudu in front of him. And the old man recognizes his mistakes from their wudu. Allah. He recognizes that, oh, I was doing it wrong. Because he knows, he knows these, these are infallible. These are not make mistakes. Mm. MashaAllah, what a lesson to learn. Through mannerisms. Man. Through mannerisms. Simple it's, akhlaq. It's, it's quite a cool thing, this, this notion of brotherhood between Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, yeah. especially. And of course, you include Abu Fadl, but I, I really want to focus on Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein here. Just an example like that. We've grown up, you know, having watched wrestling and we know this notion of tag team, you know, <laughs> yes. tag team. Yes. And that's, the, you know, that's tag team for the good. Indeed. You know, I mean, we, out let's also not take away that there was only six months uh, age gap between the two. Mm. So, you know, they, they, they grew up together. Side by side. Side by side. You know, what a family. Uh, exactly. What a family. Amazing. And it's, you know, it's, it's no surprise, <clears> of course, when we, when we look at who their parents were, it's, it's, you know, it's of no surprise. Tag team between Imam Ali and Sayyid al Fatima to spread the word of Ali Muhammad um, Guys, anything from you? Any further poetry that you have to share with us? Yes, I really want to um, ignite today, inshallah. Of course, inshallah. Um, I mean, Abu, Abu Fadl Abbas, I want to just put the, put the light on, on, on a man like Abu Fadl Abbas. Please. Who his 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 actions will shake history, um, and any characteristics in 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 the, the history of Islam, if you go back and look at them from the companions of Amir al Mu'min until the companions of Imam al Hassan and, Abel, and, and Imam al Hussein, none was like Abul Fadl Abbas. Mm. Abul Fadl Abbas was known for what his bravery, his loyalty, his uh, his 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 love uh, towards the Ahl al Bayt. His love to his religion, which is more important than anything else. Now, there's a difference of me loving my brother or loving what he believes in. 
So I can fight for my love for my brother for the sake I love him, or I can fight for my brother for the sake I believe what he believes in. Mm. There's a massive difference between the two, by the way, because I can fight for you. I love you. I'll fight for you. That's not, but that's gonna be for your love. Mm. But for me to actually combine the both together, fighting for you, because Allah loves you and you are fighting for Allah subhanahu wa taala, and for me to give my life away the way He did, was something. I mean, Abu Fadl Abbas was looked at. You know, um, he was he was he was the backbone of Abu Abdullah Al Hussein and Sayyidah Zainab. I mean, uh, when 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 they were getting ready to leave uh, Medina, <coughs> um, you know, he told Ali Akbar, you. You know, uh, gather the attention kind of that side. I have something important to do. And then you see Abu Fadl Abbas coming, coming, coming. He's covering someone until until he gets to the camel, puts her up. No one even smell or saw or heard a footstep Allah. of Sayyidah Zainab. Now, this is Abu Fadl Abbas. And people think that it's only his bravery and his fight and, 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 uh, and, and what he offered in Karbala is what he's known for. No, he's academic, he, 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 he's uh, very learned. You know, at the end, he's the son of Amir al mumini mm. He's the brother of uh, Imam Imam al Hassan, uh, Imam al Hussein. So before he when he let when they left and the people went against him in in in, in Mecca, what did Abu Fadl Abbas do? He has a famous state uh, statement, which which he said this is this is Imam Hussein, and crumbled the men there. No one dared to say anything. Well, this is Abu Fadl Abbas. So inshallah, we can um, you know hopefully. These words of, uh, of our dear brother Tahir Adil mm. can bring something to the love of Abu Fadl Abbas. Inshallah. <clears throat> when words pile upon like dust, and the question arises as it must, who is the Hashemite moon, and why words? Fail to materialize. I'm left to when his actions describe him better. I'm left to how can I describe him when his actions describe him better? My mind turns to his moment Between the thirst and the water As if he seeks birth or death Yet they are one and the same He was born that day he died And died the day he was born my thoughts are stung by this rose, by this rose's thorn, and my pen is torn, just like the pilgrims are between him and his master. Who to visit first, my mind will always ponder. Muhammad wa Muhammad. And this, uh, this him and his ma and his master, who do I ponder? There's uh, there's a lot of people um, who have this thing, and um, yeah, I mean, I think everyone should kind of have this thing where when they get, when they arrive to Karbala before they visit Imam Hussein, they'll visit Abu Fadl Abbas. Usually they go to Imam Hussein and then visit Abu Fadl Abbas. But with a lot of people, and I think it's a beautiful way. They visit Abu al-Fadl Abbas and then uh. go to visit Imam Hussein. Why? Because they go and ask permission from Abu al-Fadl if I'm, I'm allowed to even enter near, the, near Imam Hussein. Because uh, you know Abu al-Fadl Abbas was the flag bearer, was the, was the guardian of the tent site. And uh, anyone that would come, they would ask Abu al-Fadl Abbas, um, uh, can I speak to Imam Hussein or can I, can I visit Imam Hussein? And that's how it, how it is. And it's something beaut beautiful. I mean, uh, in Sha'ban, um, I've been there quite quite a few times. Um, the beauty, the beautiful thing about it is when when you enter the shrines, the amount of flowers, the amount of things that's being thrown into the into on top of the dariah, 
of Abel Fadl Abbas compares, comp- com- uh, uh, compared to the, to the shrine uh, the of Imam Hussein mm. is a massive difference because Abel Fadl Abbas is, is a Bab al Hajat. Mm. He's, 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 he's the person who, through Imam Hussein, will give you your, what, what you want. So, Alhamdulillah, we're shukur for these kind of na'mah, these kind of characters in our, in our life. Alhamdulillah. Big time. <coughs> A joke that is usually said in Iraq, they usually say, um, for example, if someone says, Oh, did this actually happen? He says, Yes, will Hussein this happened? Say, Will Abbas? He said, Should you say, Will Abbas? <laughs> then, then, then he's going to do Tashwish Warbiya. So they have this ideology of Al Abbas, is, is this great thing. Mm. However, I do want to mention, say, mentioning Abbas uh, Al Abbas was so beautiful because, and you mentioned bravery, you mentioned loyalty, but I think Abbas Fadl Al Abbas personally, I think he's a bit. And let's say oppressed in one way. Mm. Mm-hmm. No one actually look at his the religion of Abdul Fadl Abbas. Mm. No one looks at this great obedient person he is to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And we re- we realize in the ziyarah of Abdul Fadl Abbas, the Imam who the ziyarah is from the Imam. The Imam he he talks to Abdul Fadl Abbas he says Assalamu alayka ayuha al Abd al Salih al Muti' ul Allah wa li Rasulhi wa li Amir al Mu'minin wa al Hasan wa al Hussein. Peace be upon you, O obedient servant, the one who obeyed Allah and his prophet mm. and Amir al-Mu'mineen and Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. And to be honest, uh, even with poetry, when we look at it, a lot of the poetry, especially in Arabic, when it's about Abel Fadl Abbas, you see him going into war, you see him fighting, you see... I want one, one poem <clears throat> that I love reciting, and I honestly recite it all the time, and I always get told off by, mom, by my mom for it. <laughs> it's, Batal uh, Abbas <laughs> قَالِ الْمَا You've heard about Ahmed yeah. al-Bawi. Uh, Al-Abbas is brave, he said, the water I will bring. Mm. And if you, if you look at the, the, the verses of it, it's like, in, in the war, he entered the war, he killed this person, he did that, this person said, who is this? So my mom always says this, uh, saying, the same thing you were reciting, Ashuram, people will cry and do a lot on it. Mm. And here they'll be clapping no, on it. Clapping. So I called my cousin, I said to him, listen, I want something about Al-Abbas and his religion. Mm. So he came up with these verses, if I may recite please, them. Please, please. He said, A noble knight was born in Sha'ban. Abbas is well known for his Iman. He was a warrior in every front. He conquered all hearts through his ihsan. Mm. He commented here, he said, when I said he was a warrior in every frontier, so he's in the front line of everything, he said, I mean, not only in the war, but even when it comes to ibadah, even when it comes to salah, even, he's always at the front. Then he carried on. He was dedicated to Hussein. His brother lived in his every vein. He was very faithful, for this he was grateful, as Abbas and turn him of Cain. Who, when the world can describe Abbas, in faith he's brighter than any gloss. He was a worshipper, a scholar and super, in all qualities Abbas came across. And on that note, we leave you our dear guest for a short break on the utterance and fragrance of the words of praise of Abu Fadl Abbas salam. Inshallah, on our return, we'll continue with our fala'il of the Ahl al-Bayt salam. We'll touch upon Imam al-Sajjad salam and also look a little bit further forward, roughly 10 days to a pretty special day for us Shi'as, inshallah. Of course, we'll elaborate when we get there. So join us after the break. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome back, our dear viewers. And I left you on a slight cliffhanger, but probably not the best one in the world that you've ever heard. But nonetheless, we'll run with it. We were saying that we're going to come back and continue our fala'il of Ahl al-Bayt salam starting with Imam al-Sajjad and then starting potentially to look forward to roughly 10 days, of course, to the 15th of Sha'ban, a day that we as the Shia of Ayy ibn Abi Talib really crave and await for. So 
to start a little bit on Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, if I may, I just, again, when we mention him, it's typically we know what happens, that he was ill during Karbala. We know a little bit about his Imam when he gets it, obviously uh, 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 following the tragic death of Aba Abdullah. And then we know his journey um, through to Syria, etc., and back to Medina. And usually it kind of stops there. We, the general knowledge that we have about them typically just stops there. So I just wanted to give a very brief overview of kind of what it was like for him. So context setting. Imam Sajjad salam, of course has been through the toughest ordeal a son could possibly ever go through. Mm -hmm. A son, a nephew, a cousin, a brother, a friend, having seen what he had. Of course he was ill during this time and you know, that ordeal had to live with him for circa 30 years after the event of Karbala. It was 30 years until he passed away roughly. And just touching on that, it's quite a significant amount of time to live with such a tragic and vivid memory that he must have had. And for this, we then think, okay, perhaps there was solace upon returning to Medina, his hometown. Now he's home, you know, you can relax a bit. You know, it's, it's typically, you know, when you come back from a hard journey, being at home gives you some solace and internal serenity and peace. But as I alluded to at the start of the show, when he came back to Medina, it was an extremely hostile Medina that he returned to. A very different Medina to what we see with, uh, towards the end of the time of Imam Baqir and Imam Sadiq, where the Shias were allowed to speak out a little bit more, hence why we have much more ahadith from them. But if you look to Imam Sajjad, there's nowhere near as much as there is to our fifth and sixth Imam in terms of narrations that come through. Why? Because even the mentioning of Ahlul Bayt alayhimussalam's names would receive death penalties, lifetime imprisonment, etc. torture. So despite coming home, this volume and impression upon him and the family of Al-Muhammad continued. And as a result, we have very little to kind of understand from his life. So I just wanted to give two examples, both actually that are related to Hajj. So firstly, there's a time where he was traveling towards Hajj with one of his companions. <clears throat> And as they approached Mecca, his companion made a remark and he said, wow, you know, look how many people, look at the turnout for Hajj this year. To which Imam replied and he said, I only see three of us. I see yourself talking to his companion. I see myself and I see your camel. That's all I see. The rest are all animals. And what he was alluding to here was to say, great, here's an ummah. Yes, there is a group of people following Islam, or so we think. Yet despite them doing one of the best actions in the eyes of Allah, Hajj, he's saying they're just doing it off the tongue. Yeah. They're just doing it for the sake of doing it. They're just, there's nothing more. They're no more than animals, just following whatever. Quite a powerful and profound statement to show just how corrupt the Ummah was at this point in time, especially in how difficult it was for him. And a second narration, again, to do with Hajj, and a much more famous one that we know about him is when the son of the ruler of the time was kind of at Hajj, he was sat there, he was looking at the black stone saying, you know, okay, I'm going to make my way and the crowd just didn't part for him. And then at one moment, this kind of very arrogant son of this ruler of the time, he sees someone, an old man, get up, start walking towards the black stone, Hajar al-Aswad. This kind of crowd parts for him, he reaches, <coughs> kisses it, returns back to his place, no issues. This guy's like, you know, who on earth is this guy? You know, how, me, the son of the ruler, and I can't even make it, no one moves for me. How is everyone moving for this chap? Who, who is he? To which the very famous poet Farazdaq, he gets up and he delivers a few lines and I just want to share just a couple of them with you. And he says, he is who that the whole Mecca knows him. Every stone within the Kaaba knows him. He is the son of the grandson of Fatima and Ali and of the Holy Prophet. And he goes on to say, a few other things, but interestingly, again, just to show the oppression of Ahl Bayt salam, Hisham, who is the son of the Caliph, he then sends Farastak to prison just for reciting these wow. lines of poetry, was on Hajj in praise of the grandson of Rasulullah, and Farastak later dies in that prison. Such was the oppression of Ahl Bayt. So what do I derive from this? Very simply, patience. We usually associate Imam al kadhim and by all means, he deserves that title beyond any belief. But patience with an <laughs> Imam al sajjad and conviction in Allah through tribulation and trial, regardless, it really goes towards him. And for us, when we say, you know, 
why have I faced this tribulation? I'm, you know, I pray so regularly. I pray with sincerity and taqwa. Why does Allah give me this punishment? Take a second and look. If someone like Imam Sajjad is being challenged and challenged and challenged to his last moment, don't think that just because you're being challenged, it means you are far from Allah. Just know he's testing you so you get closer and closer and closer. So just a brief understanding of Imam Sajjad after Karbala, inshallah. But there we go. I leave it to you guys now. I've spoken it up. Same on on uh, Imam Sajjad after Please. Karbala, because we must understand every Imam has contributed mm. to Islam. So what did Imam <laughs> Sajjad contribute? What happened after Karbala? The situation was very, very tense. The Umayyads were still in power. And they hired spies to keep an eye on the Ahl al-Bayt. Imam Sajjad himself actually moved out of Medina, had his own tent and used to spend a lot of time in the tent on his own. Say the Zainab used to bring him food. Mm. <clears throat> and he would go there and, and he would... And you need to understand also, while he was there, he prepared. Now what was he preparing? What has Imam Sajjad contributed? Three main things he has contributed to Islam. First of all, and not many people know this, but the foundations of Al-Mahdi, not Al-Mahdi, sorry, Al Medina University, which Imam Bakr continued and Imam Sadiq flourished in. Mm. The foundations were set up by Imam al Sajjad. Also, uh, Sayyid al Sajjadiyah. Mm -hmm. One of the, the greatest dua books we have, 61 du'as. And uh, you, you name a situation, there's a dua for it. You name it. Debt, um, health, headaches, headaches, Anything, yeah. Hajj, uh, coming of Ramadan, the leaving of Ramadan, uh, uh, finding a spouse, uh, for, uh, anxiety, uh, depression, anxiety, you everything. name it. And, and, and the greatest ones, uh, you know, the whispering prayer, the, prayer, mm. the whispering du'as, the one of the repenter, the one of the one who sinned, the one Powerful. of the amazing du'as. And, and, and in there, I, I once used it myself, I was in a situation, um, and I'm not going to mention which du'a I read. <laughs> However, when I read that du'a, how specific it was to my situation it was unbelievable and the lessons you could learn from that du'a were, were phenomenal as in it was telling me you're in this situation in future this is how you do it make sure you do this make sure you do that make sure you stay away from this make sure you stay and it's like this, this is not a du'a this is a khutbah mm. you know Amazing. and that spoke to the people it really it spoke did, to me to did. realize whilst he couldn't overtly spread the message mm. finding these he words behind him yeah. precisely yeah. his words exactly. his actually like whoa who is this guy you know exactly as so i said three things I yes said, first was the foundations of a medina university second was safe as idea so it was the third one if you remember my talks it said amar we are Rasat al Haqq, the the rights the uh, treaties, treaties of rights. Of rights. And we, we and, you know we discussed the rights of the eyes, the nose, the tongue, the stomach, the rights of prayer, the rights of Hajj. Family members. Family members, friends, so so teacher. many rights that Imam Sajjad has, has discussed. Uh Sayyid Amar in one of his famous lectures discusses how the UN have have done the, uh, have written the human rights. Mm. But where has it said the rights of your soul, the rights mm. of your God, the rights of your eyes and, and your body parts? Nowhere. Mm. This is real humanity, and these are real <laughs> lessons that we can learn from the Ahlul Bayt. I sent. I sent. I sent. I sent. I sent. To you guys. I think the thing he mentioned regarding the dua is he truly implemented, like Imam Sajjad, he truly implemented the narration of a dua silah al anbiya, mm. Mm. The, the weapon of, of uh, prophets. And it was truly shown. His ahkam was spread through his, yeah. through his duas. Ahkam of Islam. And like he said, even the helping get, gain to the needy was all spread through dua. And Truly, he was truly the initiator of this school that he mentioned, and mm -hmm. I loved I loved the name he gave at the University of Medina. Um, he was truly the initiator for this. He, he was giving space for Imam Al Baqir to actually start this. Also, I think that was very beautiful. Jazakallah khair. <laughs> Any pieces from you guys? I think I'll leave it to say and then yeah. off to you. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, Imam Sajjad actually plays a massive role in Islam. As we said yesterday, he's the savior of Islam because after him. Uh, as you said, whoever loves, um, you know, Imam Al Hussein, whoever whoever is the the follower of the Ahl al Bayt, were were deemed in oppression, and um, you know their life would be at risk just for saying I love, mm. so and so, and Imam Sajjad still was able to revive. Not, I wouldn't say revived, keep the name of of uh, of, of Shia of Islam. Um, even though of the hardship of the time, I, I, I mean, they, you had you had of course the tyrants mm. who uh, they stood, they locked up many many of the companions before Imam Hussein can actually get to him, mm. and um, and before before they got to Kar got to Karbala, 
um, you know, those 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 people who were supposed to actually arrive, but they were arrested and taken. Same as if when Muslim Muslim Ibn Aqil, when he went to Kufa mm. to bring everyone to, towards Imam Hussein, he was then obstructed. But so so this is happening. But Imam Sajjad allowed this, and and as you said, created a gateway for Imam Al-Baqar to and, and Imam Sadiq to enhance the knowledge of, of Rasulullah through 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 the ilm, through the munajat, through the love that he's already planted in. Ahsad. I've got a small poem, a poem for uh, Imam Hussein and what his worth is. Mm. Wow! Please. It will give. It, it won't. It won't. Of course, as I said at the beginning, poetry would not would not come to a a, a limps. But we can try. About Abdullah, we try. We yes. do our best, inshallah. Allah, <clears throat> this is a, a poem by uh, Nuri Sardar. Seven letters of which daily I've dreamt And to each letter a lifetime I've learnt His name touches my ears Before my heart's consent the beat of my heart skips a lover's moment The joy of them of my smile And the cries I lament Yet I still wonder what Hussein really meant Sense. My eyes see bodies on desert plains they lied, yet their names lived on through upon dust. They lied, whoever said Hussein's dead. Mm. Wallah, they lied, he lives in the heart of every believer. He preached revolution alone with his soul sword. He defeated swords with blood and with his soul sword. Mm. Hussein didn't die that day, rather, his soul sword. His name is a symbol that flies forever. Muhammad. Can you just read those lines again about the soul soaring and the sword? That that was that so, was pretty amazing. Nuri, actually, this is one poem that Nuri, um, that that I personally think, um, from all the writings, of, they're all beautiful. Mm. But this one actually is is, is taken for, for, from uh, the Arabic poetry, which is like Abu Diyad, uh -huh. where the last word will, will will sound the same, have different meanings, synonyms. Yes, exactly. So for the first one, when he said, "My eyes see bodies on desert plains, they light." Okay, yet their names lived on. Three upon dust, dust they lied mm. and it, 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 it rised. Okay. Whoever said Hussein is dead, they, they lied. lied. And he lives in the heart of every believer. Mm. So the way he connected this this one is actually very, very nice. And may Allah give him the blessings, inshallah. Inshallah. Um, I just wanted to touch on, on one thing. I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's here. It's again just touching on Imam Hussein alayhi salam. <laughs> And it's quite a powerful narration. So say the Fatima Salam Allahi Alayhi narrates it um, and it, it goes like this and it's talking about the proof of the Imam of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, just to touch on, on what you've been discussing, uh, reciting. So say the Fatima says, the Prophet came to me after I gave birth to Hussein. Mm. So I gave him, Hussein, to him, the Prophet, in a yellow cloth, which he cast aside and wrapped him inside in a white cloth. He then said, so the Prophet then said, Fatima, take him. And look at this statement from the Prophet. It's unequivocal, undebatable, and just so clear to us. So he says, he then said, Fatima, take him. He is indeed an Imam and the son of an Imam. He is the father of nine Imams. From his loins will come virtuous Imams, the ninth of whom will be Al-Qa'im, the awaited saviour of mankind. Ajallahu ta'ala farajul sharif. Unequivocal, undeniable, <laughs> hard-hitting truth of the Prophet talking to Sayyid the Fatima, giving her the glad tidings as to who this young individual was going to be. And for sure, he lives in our hearts now. Mullah Ibrahim, you are on the verge 
of delivering us, no doubt, something beautiful. So I don't want to stop you. Afan, <laughs> this is um, also poetry uh, written by uh, Dr. Basman Ansari. Uh, and in this, about Imam Sajjad. I was asked about him, so sat for long in thought, reflecting what makes him pride of our school of thought. It's Zainul Abidin, the one known to us all. The beauty of the deen was titled for his call. No equal in worships to Ali the Sajjad. Also in relationships, he wrote commands of God through his supplications. Ali taught us our creed. There are ammunitions like the prophets indeed. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. I just wanted to ask you guys a very, very open question. Naturally, but we, we come from different communities and different cultures. In terms of Mawalid celebration, what is it typically, for example, in your community say that, that kind of is the norm? Like, is, is, it, is it usually poetry? Is it food? Is it a type of food? Different food for different personalities? What's it like? Everything. <laughs> all of that. All of that. Uh, first of all, it's the decorations. Okay. Um, we normally make a little stage mm -hmm. uh, for people to come and perform. Mm -hmm. um, we decorate it. Loads of flowers, loads of lights, uh, drapes and curtains of different colours, really nice. Loads of reds, blues, turquoise, greens. Um, and whoever wants to recite, they'll have a list of people. Mm. Uh, and normally it's about, I'll be honest, it's about 10 to 15 because I usually get the message and it'll say like local Zakirin they'll usually yeah, put which yeah. is it, it's quite specific to the Pakistani community where they say look open floor anyone come it is, it's, it's it. an open mic really but uh, mashallah alhamdulillah we have so many recitals in our own community yeah. uh, those not just who are you could say like professionals who take it very seriously uh, and, and, and take it to a, a scale where they're, they're doing CDs and, and YouTube mm -hmm. videos and things like that but they just they just enjoy it as a hobby yeah. and, mm -hmm. and it's like for them it's like serving the community as well of course. so that's their bit I'm not forgetting the food. That's the best bit. Loads of food. D dinner is always served. Uh, if there's a birthday, there's always cake. Mm. You know, and especially on the 15th of Sha'aban, which will be coming soon, uh, there's a cake for a mom and Zama, which we put on the member. Oh, we wow. cut it on the member. Wow. It's, I think it's a beautiful tradition that we have in our community. Not every Muslim does it, but we do it as in this is our... Uh, you know, Imam of our time, who is alive and well, and this is his rightful position on the member. That's so amazing. we cut the cake on the member. That's amazing. Yeah. And what cake is it? Just out of the interest? No, Costco. I think. <laughs> yeah. <Not even> <laughs> <laughs> When's the next event? Yeah, yeah. There we go. Soon, soon, Ten days, yeah. Ten days. <laughs> and, and for you guys, that I believe both from the Arab community, like what's yeah. what's the typical? I know for Azar, there's loads and loads of uh, you know visual effects and stuff. What, what, otherwise, what what is it for the happier occasions? Yeah, I think for the Iraqi communities, from the first of Shaaban all the way to the fifteenth, mm. they they die for this day, where where they have fifteen days of non-stop. Um, you know, joyful moments, clapping and stuff like that. So if you go to Karbala now, the Mawakib are opened up, same as Arba'iniya. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have people giving out drinks, people giving out food, um, pe uh, random people reciting in the middle of the streets and people come around them. Bain al Haramain, you have like a, a, like a, a, a farha, a, a, like a program as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in Shabbat, everyone gives up. What do you think, Wanda? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. definitely. In, in Iraq especially, the most beautiful place to be right now is probably Karbala. Bain al Haramain mm -hmm. is the most beautiful place Amazing. to be in right now. Yeah, yeah. From, like, like Sayyid mentioned, from the 1st of Shaban all the way till so the 15th. What's going on? The flowers that you see going around, the clapping, the, the, the joy. You know, you know, one thing about Iraq is to see a smile on, on Iraq is so beautiful after all this oppression that the country has, has gone mm. through. Mm. And Sha'ban is the month to see that all. Ah, it's yeah. truly the month to see that all. So it's, it's amazing. And just to end our dear viewers on, on a point relating to the Sha'ban, and I said we'd mention the 15th of Sha'ban. So just to close this, and inshallah, something for us to look forward to. There is a hadith which links this ziyarah of Imam Hussein alayhi salam with also the 15th of Sha'ban. So it says, those who would like 124,000 prophets to shake their hand should go to the ziyarah of the grave of Aba Abdullah Hussein ibn Ali on the 15th of Sha'ban. Explicitly mentioned, and this comes from Imam Sajjad So if you would like 124,000 prophets to shake your hand, 
go to the ziyarah of Abu Abdullah on the 15th of Sha'ban. This is from Imam Sajjad alayhi salam. And inshallah, our dear viewers, we leave you on that note. And as I said yesterday, that means you can now get booking because the days are coming quickly. <laughs> we thank our dear guests for joining us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the intercession of these kings for dunya wal akhirah. And of course, their dear mother and grandmother, Mawlati Fatima Al Zahra, Salam Allah Alayha. Our dear viewers, thank you for joining us. And inshallah, stay tuned to Imam Hussein TV where we continue our celebrations from now until the 15th of Sha'ban and then our preparation for the holy month of Allah will begin. Thank you for joining us. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.